Hello everyone! Last weekend, my boyfriend and I went to Boston yet again, this time for PAX East. If you have never heard of it, I will briefly explain. PAX stands for Penny Arcade Expo and essentially is a giant gaming convention. From video games to board games to tabletop role-playing games, you name it, they have it there. So of course, being the gaming nerds that we are, we got tickets and decided to go. We got Friday-Saturday passes, but we did go into Boston that Thursday night so that we wouldn't have to get up early. We stayed at a Yotel, which I had never heard of before, but was actually really cool. It's like these really modern, tiny little cabins. So everything is really compact. It was the bed right there when you opened the door. There was a little button to press to turn the bed into an actual bed because it's set up as like a, the couch when you first walk in. There was a TV directly in front of that. And then a curtain that blocks off the bathroom type area and there was glass doors for the toilet and the shower and there was a towel heating rack which was so cool the toilet had the button you press on the top to flush it instead of like a handle there was a monsoon shower which i had also never used before um, i learned i'm kind of not a fan but it was still pretty cool The only lights really were these lights around the bathroom mirror and the lights around the TV, which could change color. Um, outside our view was of the restaurant across the street and just the street below. Um, one of the coolest things I thought was all the little cubbies around the TV cabinet. Um, just a really good use of space. The only complaint I really had about this hotel was that there was no like mini refrigerator or microwave or like coffee type thing. I'm used to hotels having like the coffee for the morning and a fridge in case you go out and get leftovers. So yeah, really happy with that. Would probably stay there again. So now moving on to our first day at PAX, which was Friday. When you get there, you get a booklet that shows you where all the booths are in the expo hall and all the events that are happening throughout the weekend. This year they had a mini map, so we took that as well. They always have a lanyard of some kind to put your badges on. This year's was Final Fantasy themed because of the new game. We spent this day looking around the expo hall a bit, and we also went to two panels. The first was about video game addiction, which was very interesting. Um, I was a psychology minor in college, so I find human behavior to be quite interesting. And um, video game addiction is not really something that is defined. Obviously, there is a definition for what addiction is, but there isn't really a, a good idea of what it means to be addicted to video games. There's not a really good idea of where that line is drawn from where video game playing goes from being a hobby or even a coping mechanism to an actual addiction. And it was just very interesting to listen to the perspectives of the panelists speaking about this. The other panel that we went to was a PC build-off. During this panel, there were two teams and a moderator of sorts who was getting the questions and um, sort of giving them to the panelist he thought could answer them best. Each of the teams brought all the pieces they needed 
before their PC building and they were each building slightly different types of computers. One was much more compact, one was a bit larger. They were also limited by one multi-tool instead of like a tool kit that you might typically use. So it was fun to kind of watch them struggle but also learn about PC building a bit more because that's something my boyfriend has done. He built his own computer and I don't think I would ever want to build my own computer but I have considered having my next computer be custom built for me so that I can have it do what I want. We saw a lot of pretty cool looking computers that had been built um, at various places throughout the convention as well. The nice thing about PAX is that there is something for everybody. You definitely have to pick and choose what it is that you want to see and decide on if you were willing to wait to see something you really want to go to because certain events the lines fill up hours and hours before the event happens and people will wait all day for an autograph session or to see their favorite people um, do a live performance or a live podcast things like that so the th the thing about PAX is you can explore and be there all four days and not see everything that is there. We spent a good chunk of time the first day on the expo hall floor and the second day we spent the entire day on the expo hall floor and I still do not feel like we saw absolutely everything that was there and that's okay you know I expected that I had been to PAX one time before a couple years ago and you learn quickly that you have to pick and choose what the things you really want to see are and aren't so day two we spent a lot of time um, going to the things that we had really wanted to go to the first day and didn't get a chance to go to. There was a surprising amount of game demos and of dice compared to the last time that I had gone. The last time I feel like there were more um, artists and um, poster type vendors this year it felt like way more game demos, um, whether it be video game ones or um, card games, board games, that kind of thing. There's always a section set up for you to sit down and play some games with friends. They have a whole area with all these tables set up with all these games you can take and then pick a table and sit down and play with some people. I don't personally play any role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons or things like that, but I do think a lot of the dice are very pretty. A lot of the different types of miniatures I really like. My boyfriend plays all sorts of role-playing games and he doesn't set up like miniatures, so I was joking with him that Oh, I'll set up all the miniatures for you and then you guys can play the game because I don't like to play those types of games. It's just not for me, but I really find the artistic kind of sculptural elements of the miniatures very, very cool. There was this little castle set up. They have whole tables that are made specifically for gaming. One of my favorite things is to look at the board games and the card games that are available. Um, some of them are things that you've definitely heard of before, like Monopoly, but there's always some cool new games or games that I've never heard of. One of those was this like CO2 game. One game was a Bob Ross game called Happy Little Accidents, and I think 
for that game, it comes with like a dry erase thing and you make a little scribble and then your friend has to turn it into something else. There was another game called We're Doomed that was also like climate change related, like the CO2 one. Um, a game that I did get and I love is the Tea Dragon Society. This game looks very cute and it's got little dragon illustrations on the cover of it. It is very adorable. It is by the same artist who had written a book of the same name. I think it's a children's book or maybe it's a graphic novel, but um, regardless, the art is fantastic and there is a lot more strategy to the game than you would expect there to be. So I am so happy that I got this game while I was there. These guys were really creepy and I was like a little scared to walk by them. Obviously they aren't allowed to touch you and they're just there to represent the game. But some, like, some of these booths were pretty extreme. Just about every booth has little business card type things you can pick up. So if you are interested in a game, you can just pick that up, hold on to it. I definitely collected a lot of these little business cards. They had this crane machine where you could win a little stuffed guy from Hello Neighbor, um, which is a video game. So my boyfriend won me one of the little Hello Neighbor neighbor guys with blood splattered apron. The first day we did eat inside the food court at the convention center. The second day we ate at one of the food trucks that was parked outside. Definitely recommend doing that instead. The food tastes way better than anything you will find inside the convention itself. So definitely worth the time to wait in line for the food trucks. We ended up getting one from an Asian food truck. The food was delicious. We got dumplings and chicken and we shared that and then had some noodles and like a little side salad kind of thing. Overall, we had an amazing time at PAX East and I hope that we get to go again next year. It's always a lot of fun going to conventions like this. If you are interested, definitely try to snag some tickets for the next year or to the um, event that happens closest to you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll have another video up soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked what you saw here. I post a lot of artsy videos. I especially love posting travel videos even though I might not always get a chance to travel. Videos like these are some of my favorite to make. So if you liked what you saw in this video, definitely check out some of my other videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye!